this is a video I decided to do today when someone pointed out to me a major, huge, nasty discussion, which always help, which always happens when, when this topic comes up. So I thought I would come on and give my vision of this. On Bill and Doug's page, uh, PS Power, Giver, a bunch of others got into this the same topic about raw and ratings and buy rates and all of this things. And I would like to come on with my input on this because so many people live it, leave out so much of the information when it comes to this stuff. First of all, PS Power loves to compare stuff from 10 years ago to now. And no, uh, you don't do that with anything in television for the most part because it's constantly changing. And as years have gone on, you have more and more stuff on television. So the same rating that would be today is not the same rating that it would have been necessarily mean the same necessarily, you know, 10 years ago. And therein lies my problem with a lot of this because he never takes, he's a smart guy and he never seems to take into account that. A great example of that is when Raw started and when WCW was on the air, there was really only one other thing that people that would be Raw and WCW's main audience would watch, and that would be Monday Night Football. Now, just go back 10 years ago, and if you went to somebody and said, you know what, Monday Night Football, Monday Night Football will not only be off, will be off of ABC and will be on ESPN, people would have looked at you like you were a complete and total loon because Monday Night Football was always the top-rated show when it came on the television, it's to the point where none of the other networks would really put anything really good next to it. They really wouldn't attack it. Um, they would. The only thing they would do late in the season is they would put on uh, their big time like movie of the week type movies or their uh, mini series on Mondays after Monday Night Football was over. And that is what they did. Uh, so when Raw and WCW were able to do what they did, that was one of the reasons why a lot of people took notice. Now another thing about the ratings, um, so everyone needs to keep that in mind, and also the fact that if that happened in Monday Night Football, and their ratings did drop, and you see that happening with Raw, well, and you see that happening throughout television, ratings are not where they once were because there is more to watch. There's more to watch on Monday nights. You, you know, it used to be there was nothing but Monday Night Football to really watch on Monday nights. Um, and I don't see anybody when, you know, when Monday Night Football moved to ESPN, I didn't hear people, you know, going, oh my God, like a lot of people maybe should have, of saying, Monday Night Football moving, what does that say about the NFL? What does that say about the NFL? Of course, no one's going to say that because the NFL is the NFL. But, you know, people don't do a good enough job of comparing really what goes on. You look at Monday Night, Monday Night Raw is still one of the top rated shows in all of table, cable television. It is. Week in, week out, it's always one of the top rated shows. Um, there's no denying that. You can look at the numbers, and it is. Uh, you compare that to back in when, you know, the Attitude Era, which, you know, is inflated numbers anyways because of the Monday Night Wars. Um, if you go back and you actually read articles of that, there were people saying that the Nelson system needed to be totally fixed because there was no way both of those shows were pulling in those type of numbers, which was evident once Nitro went off the air because you, you know, Raw's rating bumped up a little bit, but it wasn't a lot. It wasn't as much as probably should have happened. And then it gradually dragged off because competent, because the biggest draw of the Monday Night Wars was the Monday Night Wars. More than Hogan, more than the NWO, more than Steve Austin, more than The Rock, more than any of that, it was the Monday Night Wars itself. I keep saying that. No one wants to believe me, but it's the truth. So, and I'm not saying sitting here saying that Raw's ratings are great and need to be jumped up and, and happy about, but... If you're going to bitch about them, at least come on and say, you know what, Raw's getting this, this is getting this, this is getting this, this is getting this. It shows that Raw's drop-off is more than other uh, shows of si that have been around a similar amount of time. And until somebody shows me that, then I will, you know, come on here and, and, and give the doomsday prophecy that so many people love to do when it comes to Raw. But no one can do that. You do the same thing with SmackDown. SmackDown, and this is and SmackDown is very important to this because people don't understand what the ratings really are for. The ratings, what they're for, is so that the networks can go to the ad agencies and say, look, this show gets this rating, 
so it's worth this much money to advertise on it. Unless you're pro wrestling, because pro wrestling will never get the high dollar ads on top. They won't. They will never get Ford or Budweiser or any of the big name advertisers as big time sponsors of their shows because they don't see it as, well, why should we do that? And a great example of this is SmackDown. One of the reasons why SmackDown is leaving the CW is because they didn't bring in a lot of a lot of ad revenue, even though it was at their highest rated show by a lot. Their ratings are probably going to go down as a whole, almost 20%, just because of SmackDown leaving. That's right. CW, even though they have a lot of media darling shows that you know are very popular in you know kind of the teenage girl market, they don't get real high ratings. And <clears throat> and so then moving to my network, uh, Dave Messler has talked a lot about this on the fact that. Literally, them moving could kill the CW and basically make the My Network into a big player. And if they are able to do that, that's going to allow Vince McMahon to basically say to other people, look, this is the power I have and my product has. So that's something to keep in mind, and I'm just saying. But the point of the matter is is that the ratings, what the, the ratings are really for is for that. And what you need to look at when you look at the ratings, and this is something because of the Monday Night Wars, and we just look at the ratings, look at the ratings, look at the ratings. People never looked at shares. People never looked at the amount of people that were watching the product. And that's something that you need to look at as well, not just the rating as a whole. Because literally, and this has happened to SmackDown a lot, they will get a lower rating than they will one week, but more people are watching the show. So, and, and that happens quite a bit. In, uh, in the ratings. So it's something to actually kind of look at. So when people bring up ratings and people bring up, you know, the doomsayers of the WWE, they need to remember that. That ratings across the board have been falling for about 20 years. Um, people aren't watching as much TV. They're watch There's more stuff to watch on TV. There's far more stuff to watch now on Monday nights than there ever has been. I mean, you, you, look, you know, you've got probably two shows in particular, though I don't think, I think Sarah Sarah uh, Connor Chronicles takes goes on before Raw does, but that would definitely be a show that would dig right into um, Raw's main market. And you have Heroes. Heroes definitely digs right into their main market. Um, you have uh, Deal or No Deal, and probably not, but that's still a big successful show. You had other successful shows on Monday nights as well that I can't think of off the top of my head. But you look into those things, and you see that you know it's a different market than it was. 10 years ago. Now, does that totally mean that, you know, the WWE, you know, shouldn't be pulling in, you know, at least, you know, I, I would say 3.5. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But I, I think 3.5 to 4 is probably what they really should be bringing in, and it's not. And I would say that's probably a bit of concern. Somebody else brought up the pay-per-view numbers, and particularly the domestic pay-per-view numbers, and the fact that they are down while the overall pay-per-view numbers are up. And what I always bring up when I bring this up is one thing. That's true, except look at the DVD numbers. The DVD numbers that WWE does are insane if you actually research it. It's like, my God. And I would say probably more than make up for the pay-per-view numbers that we see um, in a lot of ways. Uh, you, you know, you look at UFC, which almost entirely everyone agrees kicks the crap out of WWE when it comes to pay-per-view numbers, except... Once you get that stuff on DVD, and people will say, well, you know, that's a live event, and, and you're comparing a live event to a tape, to, you know, that sort of thing. I would bring up the point that even, you know, go look at the Pride stuff. The Pride stuff used to do very, very well. Even the last DVD that uh, UFC just released, the last Pride event, did very well in um, its release as far as a DVD release. So I, I don't necessarily buy that. But the fact of the matter is, you know, while they get more people, they get a huge, nasty percentage of the people that watch their TV to order their shows more so than WWE does. They don't get those people who are buying the pay-per-views to buy the to buy the DVDs as well. Um, you know, if you look at that list, if you look at the the list that they are in, WWE totally destroys it. And you look at this year's WrestleMania. This year's WrestleMania went crazy as far as DVD sales went. So. Those are things that people need to continually look at 
when you're really going to delve into these numbers because you can't just look at the numbers at face value. You have to look at the numbers behind the numbers. You have to look at, you have to compare those numbers to numbers that are like them. You can't just, you know, you can't do a base comparison because that's not good enough. Um, now, by that, by no means does that mean, you know, the thing that really got me about what PS Power said was he listed, you know, what a what somebody said and the fact they got a Raw got three point and that was good going against Monday Night Football and they said I can't believe people are making excuses of this except that uh, this site makes excuses for that but nearly every site would say that because if you actually look into the numbers and you actually look in what a lot of TV insiders say they will tell you hey that's still a pretty good damn rating so. I think that is what people need to look more at instead of just, if you're going to look at the business side, don't just look at the raw numbers. You have to look at the numbers behind that. And in some cases, you will see where the WWE is not doing as well in some areas as you think they are, and in other areas, they're doing far better than you think they are. It's no secret that WWE is doing far better outside the U.S. than they are inside the U.S. <clears throat> U.S. And so the WWE is kind of in this like weird kind of mode that I would compare very much to, I would say, probably 95, 96, when, you know, Bret Hart did a lot of business outside the U.S., but he didn't, he didn't necessarily do a lot of business inside the U.S., and I think they're in that kind of, you know, mode in a lot of ways, but I think that that's what you have. You have to compare things to what they are, and you have to keep in mind of what things are, not just look at, okay, well, you know, six years ago they were getting this rating, and now they're getting this rating. So why is that? Well, you know, compare this rating to last year's rating. If this year's rate, TV ratings are down over last year's, but are they down more so than other shows like them? You know, are other shows seeing that type of drop-off? You have to look at all that stuff when you dissect the numbers and then come in and say they're not doing good enough. But if you don't do that, then it just comes off a baseless and it sounds like, oh, well, you know, they're not doing as good as the numbers they did five years ago. And that shows that they suck. And it really doesn't show that they suck. I think there's been more than enough videos on here that have said, you know, the TV ratings don't necessarily mean a show had a bad show. Go back and look at Monday Night Ratings. Raw was consistently a better show for a very long time, almost a year probably, maybe a year and a couple of months before they finally beat Nitro. And it was to the point where people were like, what is it going to take for Raw to beat Nitro? Because... It was definitely the better show. Everyone that watched it thought it was a better show. You could see that there was that that the wrestling fans enjoyed it more because they were their attendance, their live attendance was far better than WCW's live attendance at that time, and those sort of things. Because if if where you know WWE, WCW was doing money elsewhere, where the traditional money for wrestling came from, WWE was doing better, and so there was a lot of like, well, what's going on, we don't understand this, this, that, and the other, and a lot of people forget that, a lot of people really, really forget that, that there was a lot of that sort of going on, so the ratings don't necessarily mean anything, because usually, I would say, it takes a good month, um, two months of good product before people finally start seeing that it's a good product, and then seeing that maybe it's a turnaround, and then you will either see the ratings stop dropping, maybe you start gaining ratings, but it's not going to be something that happens overnight. It's one of the things that really hurts me when people think, you know, that um, overnight Nitro is going to become so much better than like ECW and is going to beat ECW in the ratings. It's going to take time. And if they do beat ECW in the ratings, usually because ECW fell, not because TNA went up. So those are things to keep in mind when you know, everything kind of takes place, I would say. But, um, like I said, I just wanted to kind of do a little rant, a little video on this. Those are things to keep in mind when you're going to research, because we have people that truly like researching this stuff, truly like digging into this stuff, and that's good, and that's wonderful. But really get into the numbers behind the numbers. Don't, you know, realize that, you know, TV across the board, ratings continually fall. And then you have to ask yourself, well, is WWE's falling more so than the rest of television? You know, if that was the case, then you, then we would hear a lot more coming out of USA than we normally do. Um, and usually USA starts getting a bit nervous when the WWE drops below, you know, like 2.8 is usually when they start getting, okay, you guys need to start, you know, 
doing a little better. But like I said, and just kind of keep that in mind, I would tell everybody. But, um, you know, that's kind of my rant on that. I've done numerous rants on this, and this is another one. So I'm out. I will talk to you guys later, probably sometime next week. As, as most of you know, there is a hurricane coming right my way, and so I will be leaving tomorrow. But, um, you know, I'll see you guys later, and out.